So welcome to this session in which we are going to talk about competition, becoming competitive, how to maintain a healthy level of competition so that it can help you grow rather than an unhealthy competition, which is going to not only make you lose friends, <laughs> but not help you grow. It will be unhealthy and you will find that you're left with negative residue. Okay, which will then make you do bad things or shortcuts. So maintaining and understanding the power of competition in your life is very important because the healthy competition uplifts you and the unhealthy eats away at you. So that's today's topic. Good, great. That would be a wonderful topic today. So Welcome to the online Samosa, where we serve you knowledge in bite sizes so that it can bring happiness and uh, fulfillment in your life. And uh, today, like you said, we will be talking about a very interesting topic. Healthy competition. Healthy competition, which a lot of people do not understand the, the meaning of healthy. They think competition is competition means it got, is I not to unhealthy. I got to win. So they think they only think I got to win. Yes. Okay. Right, should we start? Yes. Okay. All right. There is something called benign competition, meaning that uh, you can be competitive, but it's benign, not hurting anybody, mm. may not even be helping you grow. Mm. It's just kind of fun to add energy between people or between, you know, like so you have a party at home and you say, okay, it's men versus women, mm -hmm. right? Or you say old people versus young people okay. or, you know, people uh, alternate, you say one, two, one, two, one, two, and people are divided randomly. And then, uh, then you um, have a game, mm. and everyone plays the game. You learn something new about some your new teammates. Mm. They learn something about their teammates. You 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 work hard, but you don't work very hard. Okay. You know, you're not, you're not trying to win at any cost. You're just trying to win while it remains positive, healthy, and a uh, happy environment. Mm. And if I have to lose, most people are willing to lose a little bit because. So it's a, it's a benign mm. competition, mm. meaning the competition is not the main part. Mm. Interaction and social. Okay. Mm. So there's something called benign competition. Okay. 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 So we should know that. Mm. And if benign competition is done right, mm. you will find you can use it mm. advantageously. Okay. You can use it advantageously to build more uh, group cohesion. Mm. You can use it to help people appreciate other people that are quiet in the team. Quiet people sometimes shine when mm -hmm. there is a, some benign competition because they are skilled in some areas. Yes. And the talkative people for the first time understand this quiet person is actually worth something. Mm -hmm. And it builds what is known as uh, mutual respect. Mm -hmm. okay. So benign competition is not as silly as it sounds. Okay. 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 Let me give you the, the most useful... <laughs> <laughs> the most useful example of benign competition. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. When your children are little mm -hmm. or whenever you run into people that are seriously competitive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. play a board game, okay. which is a dice-based board game, okay. not even cards. Okay. Dice-based, mm -hmm. like snakes and ladders. Mm -hmm. Ludo. <laughs> Ludo. And there's a whole bunch of other Western Correct. games, which are all come originally from India. Almost all board games mm. are originally India. Mm. The modern ones, there are some new ones. Okay. Anyway, but you play a dice-based monopoly. Yes. Right? A dice-based board game. Mm. What that does is that it helps people who are seriously competitive understand mm. that winning and losing has got nothing to do with you. Yeah. It's the dice. So they learn mm. after some winning and some losing mm -hmm. that it's okay to lose because everyone has so much fun. Mm -hmm. And that learning has to land. They also learn that winning all the time at any cost is not is not a good goal. Because mm -hmm. losing is not... They're afraid of losing. That's yes. why they win so hard. Correct. But by playing these games, they win and lose quite frequently. Mm -hmm. And they become okay with the idea of losing. And they start to focus on some... Then when you move to a more skilled game, mm -hmm. then they realize it's okay to lose as long as I'm building a skill. It's okay to lose as long as I'm not beating you know, an eight-year-old and I'm 35 years old. Mm -hmm. No point me competing heavily and trying to beat an eight-year-old. Mm -hmm. Because, it's, you know, you... So all of this learning mm -hmm. happens when you play a dice or a random chance-based mm -hmm. 
mm. game mm. to lower and increase our lower our ego, mm. lower our competitiveness, and increase our ability to accept reality. Mm. Okay, and find other benefits from it. Okay. So many of you maybe may have wondered when you have, if you have children, what's the point of these games like snakes and ladders or mm. snakes and shoots? They call it here, or or even Monopoly and some just random, you know, dice based game. Mm. They serve this purpose for the really competitive kids. It helps them manage and cope and they understand that, yes, my younger brother, my younger sister, why it's okay. I don't have to beat them all the time. Okay, so let's come back. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the second is another kind of uh, (laughs) competition Mm -hmm. is malicious competition. Competition in which, it's not malicious by design. Mm -hmm. It is malicious because it it evokes from inside you, mm. the maliciousness or to win at any cost feeling. So that it usually never starts off as malicious competition. Mm. It starts off as let's compete. Yes. It's fun. Mm. Then when you start to lose, the person who can't stand losing, really? uh-huh. their gear kicks into malicious mode oh, okay. because they haven't quite accepted the value of fairness yet okay so when the value of fairness mm. is not quite established mm. the the winning and the pleasure of winning looks so golden that you're willing to do anything for it okay and the minute the other team does something that you perceive mm. as being slightly unfair you say okay now all gates are open <laughs> you did one unfair thing i'll do a hundred unfair rather than say okay i'm not going to do that maybe i'll stop you See, a fairness person will say, hey, that was not a fair point. Correct. But we'll give it to you. But we'll remember that next time that we make a mistake, you have to give it to us. Let's keep it fair. Mm-hmm. Right? A fair person will do that. But a non-fair person, a person whose ideals for mm-hmm. fairness are not fully cemented, mm-hmm. will say, okay, now you broke, I'll break. Mm-hmm. And that is the seed of malicious competition. So I'm just explaining the issue. I haven't solved, we haven't solved anything yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's not healthy, am I right? Yeah, it's 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 uh, it leads to loss of friendship. It leads to low self worth. Mm. It leads to uh, you winning at that time and later on thinking, "What did I do?" Or the, that other person really deserved to win, mm. and you kind of know it, but you feel good that you beat them anyway. How mm. how? Because you hate them, mm. and as a result, the only way you can justify that victory is you enhance your hatred for them. Mm-hmm. Even though you slightly dislike them, mm-hmm. now that victory is not sitting well in you, you don't realize. But your mind says, oh, they're a really bad person. Let me find three more bad things that they do. Then my bad behavior is justified. Oh, wow. And where sometimes this happens in a marriage. <sighs> in marriage, is a complex relationship, meaning lots of things are happening. Mm-hmm. You can't keep tags. You can't keep. Ta- uh, uh, you cannot keep a uh, 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 tag on who's doing how much. It's too much. Mm-hmm. Too many things are going good. Both sides are doing good and bad, good and bad, or lots of contribution. Some so, some people are contributing high intellectual level, some more physical level, some more mm-hmm. emotional. Everyone's doing what they can. Hopefully, mm-hmm. right? Many things are happening, mm-hmm. but when a person becomes frustrated, mm-hmm. then they do things to feel better, like. Okay, I'll do the minimum amount for you, my mm-hmm. spouse. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I'm just not happy. Mm-hmm. Miffed. Right? This makes me feel better. That day you did that to me, which I didn't like. I'm gonna do this back to you. Let you 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 learn your lesson. Right? I feel better and you need to be punished. Mm-hmm. In marriage, this happens. It's more common than you think. Okay? okay. Meaning every marriage is happening all the time. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's better. Okay, we'll come we won't go away. So this this feeling mm. that I did something not so great for my spouse mm. because they did something much worse earlier mm. makes me feel more relaxed with myself. Okay? It makes you more, it makes you able to deal with the next day, shall we say. It allows you to deal with the next day. But in an unhealthy way. Because you just did something not so great for your own spouse. Come on. Right? But at that moment you think, oh, I got to do it. So you do it. Now, what happens if you do a little bit more of that is that after a while, your brain has to justify. Mm. Why are you doing this? How come you can do this? 
And the justification is that other person is really a bad person. I hate them. So you have to artificially start increasing mm -hmm. the amount of hatred you feel for your spouse to justify your tiny little bad action. Normally speaking, the bad action should have maybe taught the other person a lesson. Yeah. And then you say, I'm sorry, I had to do that because I was feeling miffed mm -hmm. and I did this because I was I told you, but you weren't learning. Mm -hmm. and so I had to kind of teach you in kind. Mm -hmm. And I hate to do that, but I did it. I'm so sorry, but I couldn't help it. I hope you learned. So, right? It's a good way to handle that. Right? But that Be also is a person who's a little bit elevated will understand that, right? Well, a person who understands that they don't want to become a bitter person, hmm. not elevated. Okay. Right? Okay. So, so there are values and there are values. Okay. So I have to now switch gears. This is an important point. So I'll, I'll, I'll take off because part of competition. Okay. In a long-term relationship, not to become a bitter person has to be a goal. Hmm. Okay. Because bitter people become unhappy, mm. unhealthy, and other people other people that liked them in the past mm. will not tell you up front, but slowly over time with friction will start not liking you and will start correcting you mm. more and more vigorous, vigorously. And you, you won't understand why you're correcting me. Why am I correcting now? And you'll feel they don't like me, they don't like me. The reason isn't they're doing something bad. Mm. Therefore, they have devolved and now they have now started to correct you. Mm. See, a person starts thinking, this person is being nasty to me, not so nice to me. That's probably because they devolved. They used to be a nice person. Now they're not nice. I'm still fine. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? That's the natural ego. So you start blaming other people for their devolution. But you caused it because by becoming a better person slowly. If people that were nice to you stop being as nice, mm. you caused it 100%. Accept it. Because the solution is with you, inside you only, not with them. Mm. You say, but it's their fault. No. It, whose fault is a useless question. In any relationship that has an, even an ounce of love, mm. <laughs> who's at fault is a useless question. In fact, it's a negative question and it will lead to bitterness. In a relationship where love is has to be involved or is involved, you need to measure how grateful you are for other people's whatever they do. Whatever they do. You need to be aware of your great gratitude and they, you need to understand what they're doing that's good. Everyone's doing good, by the way. Right? They may not be matching what your requirements are, but they're still doing some good. So unless you focus on the good, you can't motivate them to become better. If you focus on their bad, mm -hmm. you become bitter. Uh -huh. They may actually become better over time. Okay. Because if they didn't eat the bitter pill, mm -hmm. they will become better. Mm -hmm. And you will become better. Very by the bitter. Yeah, the tongue, tw tongue twister. But the butter was bitter. Wow. How to make the bitter butter better. Stop. Become. Make a goal. I resolve. Mm. I resolve never to become a bitter person. And I will do whatever needs to be done to remain positive by looking at gratitude, by enforcing good things that I can see and using them to help motivate everyone to become better people. Including me. So look for the Good in people. Look, look for things you can be grateful. Grateful, okay. Because gra you cannot just look for good. It's not easy. Hmm. I can find good, but if I don't allow it to seep into me, then the gratitude didn't happen. Then the gratitude changes me. So what I mean is, good means if you know your friend very well, you yeah. know there are certain things which they do which annoys you, right. but then you focus on the good. What are they good at? Right. I mean, what are the good their good qualities, good yeah. values, yeah. and you focus on that. You can. And that will that'll help. That help. But, but it's not but, but you have to be grateful for the good that they're doing. Okay. It has to be it has to be meaningful to you personally. Okay. Then that causes you to shift. Mm. You observing what they're doing good yes. is like a work relationship. Okay. I can use that mm. 
by praising them to get to do something else somewhere else mm -hmm. i don't have to live with them mm -hmm. they're not it's not a personal relationship right. which means that i'm i am carefully measuring when i will when i will distill some <laughs> praise mm -hmm. i will do measured praising mm -hmm. for certain goals so you do uh, let me just repeat that part so you will do measured praising mm -hmm. and that is palatable mm -hmm. meaning <laughs> that the person who's being measuredly praised for certain tasks mm -hmm. knows and feels it but in a relationship that has meaningful long term value you have to break it down into where you are grateful i'm happy that at least this person does this and this and this mm -hmm. Right. That allows you to have the power mm. to change and motivate them, if appropriate, mm. to become better in the areas that are bothering you. Like you said, something about your friend you have to tolerate. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So then you say, you know, you're so good here, and you are so appreciated. You know, it makes so it may it satisfies me. I'm so happy mm. to have you as a friend. That one little thing bothers me. I eat that, no problem. Mm. But this part, what bothers you? What bothers you? Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. Then you explain. Mm. Right. Mm. And now it's up to that friend because you explain it in this way. Mm. They'll say, "If I can't change it, I will. But if I cannot, then I just apologize." But you didn't force them to. You said, "I'm willing to accept it. it bothers me. I want you to know it. It bothers me, mm. but it's okay because your good side is so good." Mm. So that way, it's an adult transaction. Mm. If that person can change, he will. If they cannot change, you have to accept. Why would you force them to change when they can't change? Mm. They'll just reject you. Yeah. If they say I can't change that, mm. and you hate me for that, there's no relationship here, mm. and they'll start to withdraw their friendship and walk to you. Mm. That be, happens to people. Mm. Okay, so all right. So thank you for bringing that was an important point because we're, we're going to go a little bit into malicious a little bit later because mm. the cure for all of this competitiveness is, is in some internal realization. We'll come to that. Okay. Now the question is: so we covered benign mm -hmm. and malicious. Okay. Now what remains is what is Healthy competition. Mm. Oh. <laughs> What's that? Mm. So the goal of healthy competition, therefore, the signature of healthy competition is that the goal is not to win. And you say, "Oh, then I'm not. I'm not interested." <laughs> Let me tell you why. Then you know. Okay. Mm. The goal is to learn the skills. So that you can actually win in the real competition, this is a practice competition. That's what in a practice I want to win. In the practice, I want to build win-win. I want to build build all the winning skill sets, even at the cost of losing all the games. Why? Because two years from now, I'm going to be running this marathon. Or two years from now, I'm going to be in this major competition, mm -hmm. and there I want to win and shine, and I want to go there fully prepared, mm -hmm. all my skill sets in shining bright order. So how do I get to that? It's called delayed gratification. The true win mm -hmm. requires delayed gratification, meaning I'm willing to delay my gratification by losing today because the real gratification is later on when I win. That win I want. Mm, I'm hearing this uh, sentence, a word, a lot nowadays, Sandeep. Yes. Delayed because, gratification. because delayed gratification is mm. a very important part of being civilized. Mm, okay. It's a very important part of self-learning growth. Mm. It's a very important part of managing your self-growth. Because what is okay? Mm. Um, you say it. So I'm, I'll take a few minutes to explain delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. The lower-level animals, okay, mm. are driven by their mind, meaning their emotional center. And their emotions and ego. Mm -hmm. So they're driven by their mind, emotion, and ego. Okay. And delayed gratification is a property of the intellect that develops later on. So the lower the animal, mm -hmm. the more instantly they want their reward. Because they don't trust the future. There is no future because that requires planning. Mm -hmm. And the planning comes from here. Okay. And the lower level animals don't have that. Mm -hmm. For example, say you're feeding your dog, mm -hmm. okay, and you cut some meat, for example, mm -hmm. and you put it on the floor, and it lands in front of the dog, mm -hmm. and you tell the dog, "No, mm -hmm. I'm going to cook it and then give it to you." And mm -hmm. the dog, and you take it away from the dog, and the dog thinks it's gone. Mm -hmm. 
Dog doesn't think. Oh, it's okay. Please cook it for me. I'll wait. No problem. I know it's fine. Mm. The dog has no such feelings. The dog says, if you, it's a well-trained dog and you say no, then dog goes, okay, no means no. You are the alpha dog. If you want to eat it all, you can eat it all because I'm, no, I'm not the alpha dog. I'll accept my lower stature and I'll accept the no as an answer. And the, and the dog will just <laughs> lick its own saliva. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or just drool. <laughs> drool and then they, they lick it back. They don't want to just let it drop. Why? Because the dog thinks, does not think delayed gratification. The dog thinks, you're alpha, therefore I accept your no. Oh. Okay. Uh, Say you're not alpha. Okay. Say you're the kid in the house. And mm -hmm. the dog is one of those dogs which only treats one of the humans as alpha. Everybody else is beta below them, right? And the little kid says no, and the dog just eats it anyway. Why? Because mm -hmm. you're below me. Mm -hmm. You'll get whatever I leave over. Left, whatever yeah. left was from me. Correct. Right? So if you're not the alpha, you don't, won't listen to you. So dogs have some ability to think in the future, but not enough to do this. Yeah. But you can you have to learn that this is the limitation of it being a dog, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If it fell on the floor and the dog get, got to it, there's mm -hmm. very no chance you're going to get to it by saying no, no, no. There's no dog over here. It's not a dog. <laughs> yeah, dog. Okay. But human beings have the ability to understand mm -hmm. that I'm still going to get it. It's still mine. It's okay. Okay. And this has to be learned because if you don't learn this, you're behaving like an untrained dog. Untrained dog. An untrained dog won't even listen to your no. Yeah. And human beings that don't understand delayed gratification are untrained dogs. And the only way you train them is by locking them up in prison eventually because they keep breaking rules so many times that eventually they end up in prison because that's the only way we can, they will learn. The only time they accept no for no is when they're behind bars. Wow. That's the low level of civilization. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you have to learn delayed gratification by no matter how many times you have to get hit on the head, please take that learning. And you can begin by saying, that's not my food, I don't want to eat it. And how do you say that's not my food? Today I'm fasting, mm. so no food is mine except fruits or something that you allow yourself to eat, salt. More people should be eating salt during, the, during their fasting. And if they have to eat, you know, the, the fast, <laughs> fasting salt, which is called sinha mm -hmm. right? Rock salt, then you must do that because... If you have generally low BP, if you're that personality of that body wise, you should be having more salt on the days that you're fasting. So mm -hmm. some fruit with that kalanamak or sinanamak, whichever one you have, mm -hmm. you should eat more. Why? Because if you maintain the salt level appropriately high in the body, then you will not have a headache. You will not have any of the issues that are major issues of not having food. But what does fasting ultimately teach you? It says, no, it's not mine. Delayed gratification mm -hmm. tomorrow. When I'm done with my past, I'll eat tomorrow, whatever remains. And if it doesn't remain, it's not mine, it's okay. Delayed gratification. So, simplest way to start learning. But the real delayed gratification comes from respecting other people. We'll come to that. But first, just the concept, I want to make sure this. Okay, so now let's talk, continue with healthy competition. Okay. Um, healthy competition occur occurs when the competition itself is not about the end result of winning today, it's about winning in the long run. Mm. So when you go into competition, when you go into any kind of a learning exercise, what should your goal be? Learning, learning. not winning, right? not scoring. Mm -hmm. So if you're a student, your goal isn't to score high on the te every test. If the test, especially if the tests don't count towards the finals, right? many times, many teachers have tests and then they have midterm and final and those are the only two tests that count towards your grade. Correct. So all the stuff in the middle is just for you to practice and learn mm. and test whether you understood or not, mm. right? So if you're using that to test, then what's the point of that testing? The testing is not to win. The testing is to see, did I understand this concept? And if I get it wrong, please, I want to know today, mm. not on the day of my midterm and my That's delayed gratification. So you say, my understanding says the answer is this. Mm. So I'll put the wrong answer. I know it's wrong because I remember the teacher taught me this knowledge, but I'll still put the wrong answer because that's all I know. Later on, I want to discuss it with the teacher and get to the right answer. Mm -hmm. All right. So healthy competition is about um, winning on the finals. Okay. And because this ability to plan 
and sacrifice, right? Near-term pleasure and ability to uh, not just obviously do the simplest move to win, which is a healthy combination. Yeah. Was such a big drawback to being uncivilized mm. that a game was invented oh. whose main purpose was to teach you these three skills. Delayed gratification, mm -hmm. long-term win, mm -hmm. and planning. Planning is the sort of part of the brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the game is chess. Ah, yes. Yeah. Now, how much chess should you play? Mm -hmm. Everyone should play some chess. Enough to get to a decent level and then stop. Mm -hmm. Because at that decent level, you have picked up these skills and the appreciation. More than that, too much more than that will put you in a direction of just only chess and no other life. It happens. Yeah. Okay. So, chess, the purpose of chess is first of all to grow your intellect, mm -hmm. to grow your daily gratification, to grow your planning, and to understand I'm looking for the win at the end of the game, at the end of the final, not today. I can sacrifice a pawn, I can sacrifice a queen. It looks like I'm losing. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Daily gratification. Planning. All right. So, and of course, our rishis thought about that mm -hmm. and they invented the game of chess. Almost all board games, including chess, were therefore invented in India mm -hmm. for the purpose of teaching kids and adults these concepts at different levels. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's continue. We are already halfway through now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's a variety of unhealthy competition in which you may also become what is called jealous. Mm -hmm. So, unhealthy competition and jealous are slightly different. For jealousy, you need three things. <laughs> As opposed to just competition, you need two people. I'm competing with, you can have three or four, it doesn't matter, but two entities. Mm -hmm. right? My team versus your team, me versus you. Mm -hmm. Healthy or unhealthy competition can happen. But jealousy cannot happen just between two people. How come? Okay, let's talk about that. For example, if your best friend makes a new friend, mm. say, mm. right, and you are needy, you have only one friend. Mm -hmm. So you start thinking, oh my God, what if this new friend that my friend made mm -hmm. becomes a better friend and I'll become the leftover friend. Mm -hmm. Whenever that thought creeps in, mm -hmm. you now experience jealousy. So it requires three. Yes. <laughs> and I, I will uh, say that I did, I have experienced it in my Polish life. Okay. I did. So everyone has because you cannot learn without it. Mm -hmm. right? How can you not go through this experience without, mm -hmm. otherwise you will never have experienced jealousy and some way or the other way, some way or the other, you have experienced jealousy. I'm just giving you a friendly example. It could be between Things between a, between you, me, and the dog. Mm -hmm. The dog likes you more. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it happens you, in households. Just any three yes. entities. Yes. Not just any, at, at work. Mm -hmm. I could become jealous at work. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm going to lose something oh, okay. that I in, that I need, uh -huh. and I'm not willing to do the fair thing. Okay. So, what? How should the friendship relationship be is resolved? Mm -hmm. Say, my friend makes a new friend. Yeah. My thinking should be, if that friend is really good for my friend, they should be friends. I should step out of the friend. Oh, wow. Why? Why? Because I deserve a good friend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if I'm not being the good friend to this friend, yeah. and that guy is being a good friend to this friend, yes. of course I want what's in your best interest. Good. I love my friend. Mm. And I love my friend more than I need my friend. Oh, so need and love. Two different things. Therefore, it's the need that causes jealousy. Oh, my need wow. causes jealousy. Okay. My love helps me not have that need because I have some self confidence yes. that if I'm being a good friend uh -huh. and my friend can see that, yeah. he will still come back to me. It's okay. But if he sees that he's getting more value out of the other one, please, I would love to step out of the way. I want what's best for you. Okay. What you will find when you have this attitude mm. is you will make some really amazing large number of good friends <laughs> as opposed to needy people. Say your friend is needy and you're needy. Uh -huh. Say. So out of his neediness, he picked the third guy. Uh -huh. More benefit to him. Yeah. 
right? But because you're not needy, mm. more people will be able to see that you make true friendships. Yeah. And I appreciate true friendship as opposed to needy friendships. Everybody does. And you will have a bank of friends all around you. Mm. And they will be good friends. So it's not just having friends that counts in life. Good quality friends counts more than friends. Yes. So, so these are all values that you have to have. And these values automatically drive you to a happier psychological, social, social, and emotional environment. Mm. Values ultimately drive your life. Values ultimately drive the meaning of your life. I really like that point. And uh, yeah, Sandeep, I was listening to the show before this one okay. <laughs> yeah. on ownership. Okay, okay. And uh, I have, you know, I try to listen to it more than twice so that I'm able to uh, follow what you're saying. Okay. And you said a very good point that one should put the ego down and write down the names of the people you respect and value. What are the values you connect them with them? With them? Yeah. And writing those names is also a big task. It's not easy. No. Because you it's have, not. right? So but your ego kicks in. It, it does. It does all the time. Why? Oh, who's important than more than me? <laughs> so we encourage our uh, listeners and viewers to, to do these exercises and it really does make yeah. a shift in your yeah. Try the exercise yes. before, rather than intellectually appreciate it alone. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> when you hear it, yeah. you go, hey, that makes so much sense. I love, I, I love listening to this guy. This guy is so articulate. Yeah. yeah. We're getting some <laughs> But if you just call me that, I feel terrible. <laughs> because my goal is not to be articulate. Yes. My goal is to help you change. Yes. Yes. And you struggle. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Please okay. remain struggle. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about the jealousy. Okay, let's continue. Three people. So so this is competition in which jealousy kicks in. Okay. And it's a variety of the malicious competition. Yes. Right? Okay. 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 But it's not as malicious as you think. Because in jealousy, you how many nasty things will you do? Because if you do that, your friend, you'll just lose the friend. So you have to kind of, oh, I don't feel good, but I can't become nasty, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right? I cannot do that. Yes. Now, why are we talking about this unhealthy competition today? And we're already you know, a few minutes into this, so we're half, halfway into it. Because of the social media world. Yeah. We're going to talk about that now. Okay. In the this, in this social media world, there is now... In every generation, there is some new sets of information that are being created. Mm. Meaning that when I was growing up, mm. TV was new. Color TV was new. You know, we would watch it sure. two and three hours every day. And our parents at that time thought, oh my God, two hours of TV, these kids' brains are going to get fried. <laughs> true. Right? But yes. now we know that even six hours of TV doesn't really fry your brain. Frying your brain fries your brain. <laughs> 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 okay, we know that. And guess what? Now the TV has gone out of fashion, right? Yeah. Because it's a non-interactive media. Now it's more internet-based, right? And even more cable-based or, you know, um, programming that is on all the time. I can choose which one I want to watch, not just what you pass me. Mm -hmm. so, so the amount of information keeps in increasing in every generation. In my generation, it increased. I got exposure to so much te television, radio, and books. Correct. Right. In the previous generation, that was not easy. Yeah. Books were available, but the printing was still expensive. Mm. Right. In my generation, printing became paperbacks. You know, all kinds of books could be made very cheaply. Mm. So the amount of information that we I got in my generation as a 16-year-old, 15-year-old, was a lot more than my dad got. And our kids got it. A lot, lot more. I mean, they had a smartphone by the time they were in uh, middle school. In, in actually elementary school was the first time we got our son a smartphone. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I can search the internet. And, <laughs> you know, today we'd say, oh my God, that's not internet. That's so slow. You, know, you send, <laughs> send one request, you wait, 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 wait. Eventually the answer comes. <laughs> but yeah. back then it was yeah. faster than anything else. Okay. My, our point being that there is more information in each generation. And each generation thinks that this generation is ruined because of too much information. Mm. Well, if you didn't get ruined with too much information compared to your parents, how would they get ruined with too much? It's not the information that ruins. Oh. It's how you process it, it, which is why we're talking about this. Mm. In this world of social media, there are likes for every posts. 
and you get an instant gratification as opposed to delayed, delayed <laughs> gratification. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you make a post uh -huh. and you get 25 likes uh -huh. and your friend only got six and you go, uh -huh. I have the touch. <laughs> Oh, I see this so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> Next day, you make a post, you get three likes, he gets 100. Because he looked at your post and he said, oh, the reason why you got so many posts is because you said something wacko. Uh -huh. I can say something wacko. That's not even true. I will say a lie. Oh, wow. But it's wacko. So he says a wacko lie. And now he gets 100 likes because wacko is attractive. <laughs> well, it's untrue, but so far. Yeah. Yeah. So then you say, oh, I know that guy is a complete lie. And he's getting so many more likes. I will lie even bigger. Wow. And before you know it, you're addicted to likes at the cost of your values. <laughs> and when the values are being lost, mm -hmm. what's happening to you inside? You're becoming a malicious competitor. competitor. Yes. And a malicious competitor is... Actively hating people that do one tiny little wrong to justify their competition. So now you're not only just competing unhealthily, you're lying to yourself about other people's help that you get mm -hmm. and you're trying to downplay them and then to prove it to them, every time they make a slight mistake, you talk loudly about it. Mm -hmm. You don't correct them in a way that they can correct that thing midstream. Mm -hmm. You wait until the event is over and then you say, hey, you screwed up. Why did you talk like that on, at that time, they'll say. Mm. Right? Something like that. They'll say, you know, when that guy was here, you said these, these three wrong things. Why didn't you correct me in the, in the conversation? Well, then I wouldn't get my big win. I want to show you're bad. Why? Because I've decided I want to hate you. And in order to hate you, I need to enhance my hate for you. Because you're actually a good person. Yeah. But one mistake and I want to milk that. Because I'm feeling that I am feeling. What am I feeling? If I'm driving like that, what am I feeling? I'm feeling low self-esteem and I'm trying to make up for my low, low self-esteem by blaming everybody else. Mm. The minute I blame other people for pain in my life, you should just say, quad erat demonstra, QED. Therefore, I have low self-esteem. <laughs> in math, there's something called QED, right? Quad erat demonstra. Therefore, they're true. So the minute you become blaming other people instead of appreciating other people, mm. You need a little bit of therapy. I'm not kidding you. First, you accept that I'm having low self-esteem. I don't know where it came from, but I have it. And a little bit of therapy or a little bit of Ramayana, if you read Ramayana exposure, because that's therapy 101, right? All the way till Lanka Kant. Why do I say that? <laughs> Just a small digression. Valmiki Ramayana, if you read the original Sanskrit Ramayana, when you get to the Lanka Khan, it says, and thus ends the story of Rama. Oh. And, he get, and he, there's a standard ending that Sanskrit literature has. Mm -hmm. And it's a very long paragraph and they thank, thank, thank. And they say, and thus is the, this is the end of my treatise, my work. Mm -hmm. And then there is, next page, Uttar Khan. Then you read Uttar Khan. At the end of Uttar Khan, there's another ending, same paragraph copied over. And thus ends the story of Rama. Ra, 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 Ra. Wow. Then you say, why would Valmiki write two endings? Because <laughs> oh. he didn't. He ended it at Lanka Khan. Uh -huh. The Sanskrit in the Uttar Khan is of a newer period. Somebody else wrote it and added it on. Oh. So if I'm going to recommend Ramayana to you, I only want the original Ramayana from Valmiki, which ends at Lanka Khan. You're done. Go home. Oh, okay. Don't bother with Uttar Khan. Not critical. Somebody else wrote it anyway. Not, it's not Valmiki's original creation. Mm -hmm. Okay, And he was an amazing man. And up to that point, Ramayana is actually therapy 101. Okay? Come back to me. All right. So, once you realize that you have become a slightly bitter person, once you realize you become competitive with the people that are around you, once you find you're not grateful for the people around you, you conclude, I have no self-esteem. Hmm. And I need therapy to get out of this because if I could have got out of it by myself, I would have. Okay. Hmm. Now, we will continue to give you some therapy here, but therapy one-on-one -on -one is slightly different. And I recommend that if you're in that place, go get some, get some help. Hmm. Either go to a wise person 
guru guru or a good teacher mm -hmm. sometimes they cannot help sometimes they can mm -hmm. then you you have to engineer your solution is it a therapist is it a psychologist is it a teacher is it a guru is it a friend what right but you need help and take it don't just assume that everything is okay it's not okay mm -hmm. the cost is very high in the long run okay so let's continue so likes and the data that the social media gives you has the possibility, the propensity to invoke, to evoke in you unhealthy competition. Become aware of that and understand that likes is not social affirmation. See, when you start thinking more likes means more people love you, mm -hmm. and you then translate that as social aff affirmation, meaning mm -hmm. other people like you a lot, love you yeah. a lot, yeah. then you just made a compromise. You made a deal with the devil. But that's not true. Likes is not social affirmation. Likes is, hey, when you become a monkey and you jump high, we hit like. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, every time you become a monkey and you jump very high, mm. you will get a lot more likes. Anytime you do something wacko, try doing something wacko online. That's funny. <laughs> Even if it's not you, not your personality, just stupid. Everyone go like, yeah, like, 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 like. Like this is me jumping, jumping, uh, trying to jump off with a bungee cord, mm -hmm. right? And you go bungee cord jumping. It's not even your personality to do that, say, right? You just do it because you know you get a hundred likes more than the, your friend who hasn't gone bungee cord jumping, and you know he can't do it. So, so you're not even being true to who you are, but you. So likes is, is confirmation that you know how to be a monkey, <laughs> right? <laughs> now say you say decide that you're going to be your true personality. Mm -hmm. Then you're not being monkey. Then you're just saying what you have to say. And you may get some likes, you may not get likes, you may get a lot of likes. Mm -hmm. If you have something bombastic, something important, something worth chattering to say, you will get likes or dislikes, both, right? Mm -hmm. So be true to yourself is important here. Mm -hmm. And that only that is only possible once you accept the basic fact that likes is not social affirmation. I'm not looking for likes. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to say my truth, to be helpful toward my friends. To, to inform my friends and family where I am, I'm well, right? These are the true values of social media. Okay? All right. It's not like your dating life will be a lot better if a lot of people like you. People think that. That's not true. If, if you are a likable person, mm -hmm. yes, become a likable person. Mm -hmm. So evolve into becoming a likable person more than trying to become, getting more likes online and not becoming a likable person. Don't become a fake person with lots of likes, right? Because everybody who's in a relationship with you at some point will figure that out and drop you. Mm. Okay, so long-term, long-term win is let me find the right person because I'm a likable person and I'm willing to evolve and change. Everyone's changing. I want to evolve and change so that I am a likable person. I'm a pleasure to be around. Be a pleasure to be around. And if you can't do that naturally, Seek help until it becomes a natural part of you. It is possible for every person to evolve where they are adding value to their environment and not just looking after their needs. To become a pleasurable person, mm -hmm. you have to add value to people in your environment by saying, what do you need? Let me help you get that. Mm -hmm. What do you need? Let me help you get that. And if I can, let me point where you can get it. Mm -hmm. right? That's it. I'm trying to make sure you can accomplish your goals. Mm -hmm. Not just, this is what I want, go give it to me. Mm -hmm. That's the story of the crocodile and the monkey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crocodile and monkey. So the crocodile, when they saw this monkey sitting on a rose apple tree, according to Pati mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Rose apple just means a pink apple. Mm -hmm. anyway, but they call it rose apple, so you cannot understand that it's a normal fruit. It's a, not a normal fruit. Mm -hmm. And the monkey's a monkey, he's having fun, there's lot he's eating an apple, so he throws one at the crocodile. The crocodile eats and he goes, mm, this is interesting, he's, can I have another one? He goes, Pff. and he takes the other one to his wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know the story? Yeah. <laughs> so he takes the other one to his wife, mm -hmm. the wife eats it and he goes, oh, this is so tasty, can you give me some more? Who gave, who gave it to your monkey? So next day he gives him more and more. Then he says, what does the monkey eat? She goes, oh, he eats these rose apples all the time. That's all he eats. He just said, he keeps eating his own apple. Mm -hmm. One day she goes, how sweet his heart must taste. <laughs> if he eats so many sweet rose apples, yeah. 
he must have the tastiest heart. <laughs> yeah. Okay, she says that. And the, and the crocodile goes, but that's my friend. She goes, oh, but you must, can you not, do you not love me enough to get me his heart? I want to eat his heart. That must be the sweetest thing. Mm. So, sidestep. So the crocodile, the female crocodile felt jealousy. My crocodile husband <laughs> has a better friend than me. Let me get rid of the friend. Yeah. Jealousy, three people. First lesson. Second lesson. <laughs> the crocodile says, no, no, no. But then finally she just goes on strike. Huh? <laughs> I'm not, you're not getting any pleasures from me. Uh. Cuts him off. <laughs> Don't do that. Nasty, nasty, right? Because mm -hmm. that costs, because everybody will see. Then, crocodile says, fine, one day he goes to the monkey, he says, you know what? See that island over there? You've never been to that island. Mm -hmm. That island also has a rose apple tree, but there's nobody there to eat it. <laughs> Come sit on my back, I'll take you there. And you can give me some, you can eat some. And the monkey goes, yeah, that's a fair deal. Mm -hmm. Why not? He's my friend, I've been, you know. In fact, if he, if he, if he hurts me, he cannot get the rose apples. So he won't hurt me. Yeah. Monkey feels confident. Uh -huh. He sits on the back. And then halfway through, he changes direction. So has to go to his crocodile nest. He says, whoa, excuse me, excuse me. Where are you going? <laughs> he goes, well, oh, I'm going to have to tell you because I feel terrible if I don't tell you. Uh -huh. My wife asked me, what do you eat all day? And I said, you eat rose apples all day. Uh -huh. So she said, I want to eat your heart. It must be the sweetest heart to taste. Uh -huh. So I'm taking you to her so she can eat your heart. And the monkey hits the crocodile. He said, you stupid friend. You should have told me first. I left my heart on the tree. <laughs> it's not even with me. If your wife wanted that, you should have told me. I would have just given it to you. Go back to the tree. I'll give it to you right now. <laughs> yeah. Goes back to the tree. Jumps on the tree. He says, bye-bye. Nice knowing you. <laughs> End of friendship. Okay. Why in the story end of friendship? Yeah. Why? Because values were missing. Mm. So many values were missing. What values? First of all, jealousy came in. Mm. Secondly, unfairness kicked in. I want what I want. Mm. Right? In a relationship, I want what I want. I don't care about you. You give me what I want, then I'll give you what you want is my relationship. That's the female crocodile. Got yeah. nothing. And the husband also loses all the rose apples he was getting. She also loses all the rose apples. And now the husband says, I'm done with you. Right? She caused it. Yes. Her greed, mm. her jealousy, and her lack of values caused that. Mm. Right? I want what I want. Mm. Okay, let's come back. So wanting what you want is not right. Okay. Always want the fair thing and have values that you live by. Okay, let's continue. We are, okay, we have only 10 more minutes. Okay, so the, the last one that I want to talk about today is FOMO, which is the fear mm -hmm. base. So first we talked about likes and get out of the likes mode. Now the next one is fear of missing out called yeah. FOMO. Yes. This is also a form of, uh, so of course it's a fear first mm -hmm. of all, mm -hmm. but it results in uh, you being competitive to get invited. Competitive? To get invited. invited. So okay. fear of missing out. Missing out of what? Someone else is having a party. I want to be invited. I have a fear of being missing out on that event where mm. I might meet more people. Mm. I might meet the girl or my, the guy of my life. And mm. I have to get invited to that party and that person doesn't like me. So I'm going to start artificially praising them, doing all kinds of things, buying their gifts. So they like me. Mm. So they invite me to their event because I have a fear of missing out from being in that event. Wow. So the most common version of FOMO that you read is people keep checking their phone. Fear of missing out. Something Did someone say something and, and, and I missed out? Uh -huh. That's how FOMO starts. Because if I keep responding all the time, then people will think I'm active, I'm available, I'm being a good friend, I'm being socially responsive, I'm not ignoring you. So then you get stuck with that. And now what you're actually doing is not just responding to people, you're measuring who's getting how many likes. <laughs> so FOMO uh -huh. results in too much information, which results in being likes oriented, which results in you becoming a fake person to get liked here and to the party, all resulting from this fear of missing out. Is that clear? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so how do you get out of that? How do you get out of that? Mm -hmm. Have values. First of all, likes is not social affirmation. Social affirmation happens when you're genuinely a good person who's helping people and people genuinely like you because you are that personality. Mm -hmm. And if you are not there, you're working your way towards there in a little bit at a time by doing experiments mm -hmm. which may result in a short-term loss but results in a long-term gain and a win, delayed gratification to make better people friends. That clear? <laughs> so values of understanding that I want the big win in the long run mm -hmm helps you stay away from this quagmire of instant gratification and things like you could, including picking up diseases along the way of jealousy, of enviousness, if enviousness is a part of your kind of, uh, you know, flavor in there, and FOMO, like fears like FOMO, all right? So all starts with this thinking that competition is okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so we're done with FOMO, okay. Now we can talk about something else. Okay, we have only a few minutes. I want to talk about something called popularity. Mm. Okay. Because this is something that has to be understood. How much time do we have? We have five minutes, but we have enough time. This is important. Popularity is fame. And becoming popular or getting, gaining a certain amount of fame is our genetic desire. Everyone needs to understand that. Some okay. people say, I'm not like that. I'm not Yes, mm. yes, you are. But in what way? Okay. You may not be driven by it, but definitely you want your fair fame. If I've done something, somebody else shouldn't take credit. Fair? Everybody wants that. Yeah, yeah. Especially your enemy shouldn't get credit. <laughs> and then he'll claim that it's their idea and you're stupid and you don't want that idea. Right? Mm. And then they get the promotion you don't. Then they get all the credit you don't. Mm. Right? Then people mistreat you because they took your credit. So mm. nobody wants miscredit. Correct. Therefore, you want the right amount of fame. Mm. Okay. Everyone agrees on the right amount of fame. But once you taste the right amount of fame, what happens? Then you want more. Oh, because yes. it feels good. Yeah. So, but some people will say, I don't want fame at the cost of being empty. Like my brain is empty, but I'm famous. So for some people, that doesn't agree. Mm. So they say, I'm going to read a lot. I'm going to study a lot. I want to be intelligent and then famous. So that when I'm getting the spotlight on me, I don't say stupid things. I hate it when other stupid people, when people say stupid things, when the spotlight's on them. So that drives them to become a weightier person, person of worth something, not just attention for attention's sake. So people evolve. So all kinds of people, I'm explaining to you, fame has many ways in which you can have positive fame and negative fame, right? Mm -hmm. Empty fame would be negative fame. I'm, just, I, I'm famous because of my super personality, my looks, my genetics, my beautiful... Uh, missing hair <laughs> well, whatever I have to I have to speak. okay so so this is called the attraction of pop then the, this attraction for popularity gets born in us all right and it is partly genetic let me explain that part it's genetic because our gene we are designed as animals to find the best mate to make babies okay not just us all mammals all all life Right? They all, all the animals are basically trying to make the strongest babies for be strongest being the better for survival. So when a peacock is dancing, oh. he's explaining to the peacock, peahen indirectly that I'm so strong that I can afford to be so uh, uh, so good looking, mm -hmm. so flamboyant looking that I am easy prey for every fox. Oh. And the fact that I can survive means I'm strong enough that even a fox can't hurt, hurt me because I'd be dead on my way. So the reason why males of many species are so colorful is because that's proof to the female that even though you're colorful, you're strong enough to not be eaten. Uh -huh. And therefore, the females of many species mm -hmm. look for the most flamboyantly colored male. Mm -hmm. Okay, hence peacock. <laughs> so the peacock is saying, I want to be famous. I want all the females peahens to look at me because I want the best one. Mm -hmm. So... And the female is saying, I want that female, that male who's the most popular. Why? Because that's the best male. He's the strongest in, 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 a, in a peacock world. <laughs> right? So in, similarly in the human world, same thing. So we want some amount of famousness because it helps us get a better. But once you're done with that, once you found a spouse, and then you know, the needs are less. Now it's a question of fairness and earning and having the credit. Right? Mm -hmm. So now you may be driven by fame, but not the same way. It's not. But the need is genetic. 
So if you don't, why am I explaining the need to you? Because once you understand the need to genetic, you can shut it down. And now you can switch on the fairness and stay on the fairness path. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your hunger for, fair, for fame is genetic and infinite. Mm -hmm. It can be infinite. And that is the problem. So now you understand that. So, okay. I think we'll have to take it to the... No, no, we're done. I'm, I'm just making sure I have the right conclusion here. Okay. So, so this ends our one session mm -hmm. on comparative, unhealthy, and healthy. And we've explained what healthy competition is. So we need values mm -hmm. to add boundaries. Ultimately, that's our conclusion here. You need to generate boundaries mm -hmm. of your behavior mm -hmm. built on values which you understand going down to your basic root of desires, like the, all the way down to the genetics, right? So that you can then understand I need to manage them and I need to grow myself in the healthier space, otherwise I'll devolve into the unhealthy space. And this journey needs values. And values ultimately help me because of the delayed gratification and my goal to be winning in the big picture, not in the every tiny little near-term picture. That's a way to lose. If you, if you play chess by saying, I must get ahead in every move, you will lose every time. Because a guy will give you a temptation, here, eat my pawn for free. Mm -hmm. Leave the pawn for free. Pop, the queen comes with a checkmate. You go, oh, what happened? Oh, you took the bait. Yes. Taking the bait is short-term thinking. Don't do that. Win in, the, win in the long run, which is delayed gratification. So that's our session. Wonderful. What a beautiful topic, Sandeep. And I think it goes well with uh, a lot of young generations, or I would say the millennials. <laughs> what I'm seeing around my kids, and I can see a, a lot of kids who are into like, FOMO, the fear of missing out, and and uh, instant gratification. Yeah. So this is a very good, it's a very good topic, and I think we all can benefit from this topic. And we urge you to listen to it and follow us on our all the social media platforms. Uh, we are on Spotify, we are on Apple Podcast, we are on YouTube, we are on Twitter, we are on LinkedIn all the social media platforms. And uh, thank you for listening to us all the way up to here. And we, we appreciate that uh, you found us valuable. And just like there are so many other people who would get value from listening to these shows. So we would encourage you to share it, forward it to your yeah, friends. Yamini is being very nice. I'm going to say more directly. If you find value in what we're saying, yes, then please repay that value by sharing and liking mm -hmm. and subscribing because it does help us and we haven't even started any kind of fundraising campaign yet because these things are expensive for us to do and it takes a lot of our time and resources and other things. So we appreciate you being thankful, you know, helping us out. Yes. And comment on our YouTube channels. and Which, our, which is happening. Yes, yeah. yes. And we really yeah. appreciate it. So uh, till then, a warm namaste from Yamini. Yep. And a namaste from Sandeep Tiwari. Thank you for being here. And uh, we remember, the online samosa.